Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about counting it all joy. What do I mean by that? I'll have to stick around and find out right here on Garden Jen's Journey. So welcome back to my channel. Uh, if this is your first time here, go ahead, sit back, relax, and just enjoy uh, the video. We're, we're going to take a journey today. I will uh, do a disclaimer uh, for those who are not interested in spiritual things. You can go ahead and take this time to uh, leave the video if you'd like, um, because I'm going to be talking about um, my faith and some spiritual applications that um, I've been dealing with as I go and deal with the COVID-19 journey that um, myself and my household has been on. If you're okay with that and you want to hear uh, how my faith has helped me get through this this time, um, sit tight and let's chit chat and just uh, really get down to what keeps me going when uh, everything else seems to be hitting the fan right now. So I want to share some scriptures with you <clears throat> and um, these are from the King James Bible. Um, I like New King James wording sometimes because I have a hard time with, with speech with all the these and thous and everything but uh, King James is, is what I have right now. So I'm going to read a couple of verses um, for you and if you want I will give you some time to grab a piece of paper and a pen so you can jot these down and maybe refer to them in your time of need. So the first passage that I'm going to read to you today is from James. Uh, James is the uh, brother of Jesus, um, who later came into understanding the role that his brother indeed had to play um, in his later years. And he was a wonderful writer of a small little book. So <clears throat> James is where we get the title for the video today. He tells us, and this is in James 1, verses 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations or trials when crap's hitting the fan and uh, everything seems to be going downhill. Count it all joy. I'm going to go through a couple more verses and then I'll uh, I'll talk <laughs> besides this, but I just wanted to share these with you because these are very, very important to me right now. So the next scripture is found in Job chapter 13, verse 15. <clears throat> and you'll have to bear with me. Um, I'm getting some more symptoms of the COVID experience again, so it's really hard for me to breathe in. I got a lot of crap that... Uh, I'm trying to clear out of my system, so bear with me here. <clears throat> so again, that scripture was Job chapter 13, verse 15. And Job is giving counter arguments to his friends who are trying to blame him or blame God for the predicament he is in. And so this is a rebuttal that Job says to his friends. Though he slay me, Yet I will trust him. I will maintain my own ways before him. And what Job is saying to his friends 
is that even if the Lord decides that he's going to have Job pass away, Job will trust God because he knows that God has his best interests in heart. And Job is going to continue to do what he's been doing, honoring God, from ever since he was a little sprout, and nothing his friends are going to tell him will cause him to dishonor God. So, though God might slay Job, Job is still going to continue to trust and honor God. And that's very important to think about when you're not feeling good, when crap's hitting the fan, and the trust issue is like, who who do you trust, and, and things like that, and should you still trust God when it seems like he's ruining your life? You know, these are things that people think about. <clears throat> the next couple verses that I uh, want to read is found in John chapter 14. And there's a couple different verses in there uh, that we'll go with. <clears throat> so again, that's John chapter 14. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the first two verses are verses 18 and 19. Jesus is saying, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. And you shall live also. And then we're going to go down to verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let your heart not be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Do you want that kind of peace today? The kind of peace that Jesus can give you that is your calm in the midst of this gigantic storm? I want that peace. And it's not the peace of the world because the world doesn't have peace. The world's in constant chaos. It likes keeping people in constant chaos. But Christ wants you to have the peace that it comes from knowing him knowing that he loves you so much that he died for you that you could be with him forever in heaven someday <clears throat> our last text that i wanted to go over is one of my favorites and one of the ones i hold on to most dear as i struggle with uh, different bouts of mental illness and different bouts of physical illness and it's just a very strengthening verse and so I wanted to share it with you guys today it comes from 2nd Corinthians chapter 12 verses 9 and 10 <clears throat> okay so here uh, the Apostle Paul is talking about some trials that he's been dealing with and he's asked the Lord three times to remove this trial from him and we're not privy to what exactly he's dealing with there's speculation that it's a physical ailment there's speculation that it's a spiritual warfare attack that he's constantly dealing with we don't know exactly what's going on but the principle of the matter is the same. This is what Paul says. Again, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glorify in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, 
for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And Paul saying that um, the Lord himself told Paul, you know, after the third time of saying, no, I'm not taking whatever it is away from you, that my strength, the Lord's strength, is sufficient for you, Paul. It's sufficient for you, my fellow viewer. God's strength is sufficient. And in your weakness is when God's strength is made perfect. When you are at your weakest is when you're at your strongest. Because that's when you're relying on the Lord and his strength to get you through. So those are some verses I wanted to share today as we're dealing with, with some different things. Um, I was diagnosed with COVID uh, last week. I got the test results back, uh, and not last week, two weeks ago now. My goodness, time is flying. <clears throat> um, but I've been sick with COVID for 10 days now. And I'm coming down with some more symptoms, um, some that are more severe than it was even five days ago. So I'm really feeling like crap. Um, our son is now getting into the thralls of it. He's really struggling um, with nausea and coughing and fatigue and those things right now. Um, so he's kind of struggling. But uh, we're still at the homestead. We're still hanging on. We don't have to go to the hospital yet. Um, so all is good there. Um, but it's a struggle. Um, you know, if you've been watching my video, you know that uh, shortly after I was diagnosed with COVID, I also injured my back. Uh, somebody had asked, uh, isn't your back injury part of COVID? Because I guess that's a symptom. No, it's not. I'm overweight. I'm severely overweight. And that puts a lot of strain around my back, especially if I bend forward. I've got a lot of fat hanging in the front of me. And so trying my back trying to right me back up um, gets injured very easily. So no, my back problem isn't COVID. It's because I'm fat. <laughs> but anyways, so I messed up my back. I ended up going to the ER because my muscles were so angry that um, I was in excruciating pain. Um, so I went to the ER and they were able to get them to calm down enough where I can be up and around and move and uh, yeah, it's it's been a journey. Um, I'm moving, I'm standing, but I hurt like the dickens. Um, you know, I feel like crap because of COVID. Um, but I count it all joy. Um, my husband, he's a landscaper. He owns his own company and there's just him and our son who works for the company and because of COVID we're shut down for three weeks and this is the most precious time in landscaping in our area um, because things are waking up um, it's time to start getting that grass uh, raked up getting the you know looking nice getting the plow damage cleaned up from plowing through the winter um, the lawns look like crap right now because they've been buried underneath uh, all the grime and stuff from the winter. Um, but my husband can't touch them. He can't leave the homestead for three weeks. And some of his clients are in pretty well-to-do neighborhoods. And so that's really sitting hard on his conscience right now that he's got these uh, clients that, uh, you know, are in good neighborhoods that their lawns look kind of crummy. And he can't do anything about it and so that's really rough on him um, it's a lot for him to deal with um, <clears throat> my church family most of my church family is sick with COVID um, some are in the hospital and others are recovering um, at home but uh, there's I think 15 or 16 of us um, that are sick or was sick or is just now getting sick um, so that's a very tight-knit community that's dealing with a lot of, of strain that way but um, we count it all joy um, it's not fun I didn't say it's fun but um, we don't want to let Satan have the the upper hand in this we don't want to let him have the the glory uh, in this that he can knock us down and 
and uh, you know, ha ha, uh, we're not going to do that. Um, it's it's beautiful outside. The sun's been out. I've been able to get outside and at least sit out here and enjoy the animals. I've been shooting some videos of the birds. Um, I'm going to try to do some of the garden as my back will allow. There's things going on and with me being down right now, it's given me time to slow down and look at things and appreciate things a little more. Um, so, count it all joy. Um, you know, my, my son, he was in denial about COVID, like many people are. And now he's on his butt with it. And so it was kind of a reality check that, you know, COVID's real. Um, it hits everybody differently. Um, but now he's outside sitting in the sun. I have to almost pull him, dragging, kicking, and screaming to come outside because he's a, he's a hermit. Um, but he can appreciate it finally understanding reality and not living in some false ideology that COVID doesn't exist because it does um, you know it's it's a weird disease um, but it's real you can't fight it you can't hide it and once you come to terms with the fact that COVID is out there and it's real you can get it you can get sick and maybe you can move on um, reality is a little bit better <laughs> um, because you're able to face it because you know what it is and you're not trying to constantly fight it. My husband, he's been able to look around the yard and start cleaning up the yard and doing some chores around here that otherwise he wouldn't be doing because he'd be out working. And so the homestead's really done a dramatic uh, makeover in the last two days because my husband's found things to do around here that's needed to be done. Um, so even though he's really struggling with not being able to go out and tend to his clients outside of the homestead, um, we're counting it all joy because there's so much he is able to get done right here on the homestead. My church family, um, we're all sick, but it's okay. Um, we're not running scared like a dog with the tail tucked between our legs from this. We're not blaming anybody uh, we're pretty sure we know where it came from um, but that's not the point the point is that we're in this together we actually call each other every night right now and we pray for each other and especially the members who are in the hospital right now so this is our time as a church family that we've really come together and united and we're not running away from this disease we're not blaming anybody we're not cursing God we're just um, spending more time with him and in prayer and lifting everybody up. So even though this time has been rough, um, and by no means do I have it any, you know, I have it pretty easy compared to my friend who's in the hospital right now. But even though this time's kind of rough, I still count it all joy. Um, God has us going through this for a reason. And it's so my character can be made better, so I can be made more fit to serve him and to be in the kingdom with him. And so I'm thankful that he's spending this time to refine my character, even though sometimes it really, really hurts. When your nose is pressed to the grindstone, it hurts. But the finished product is going to be simply amazing. So I'm thankful. And that's why right now, I'm counting it all joy, no matter what's going on. So I hope that this video was kind of encouraging. Um, if you're down in the dumps for whatever reason, dealing with COVID, dealing with whatever in life, that maybe in some small, simple way you can count it all joy. Because in the end, all things work together for good. And let me get that scripture for you. <clears throat> it's one of my friend's favorite, favorite verses. Um, because she deals with a lot but when you put it into the context of the big picture it's so much easier to to deal with okay so this is the last scripture I'm going to leave with you today and it's found in Romans chapter 8 verse 28 <clears throat> 
And we know that all things, how many things? All things. For we know that all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. All things work together for good if you allow them to. If you allow the Lord to use whatever you are going through, He will use it for good. You might not see it now. You might not see it till you get to heaven. But whatever you're going through, whatever somebody else that you know is dear is going through, it's all going to work out for good. You just have to trust the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. That's Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends who might need some encouragement. Thank you for walking with me on this spiritual journey today. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you can keep updated with all the different facets of the journey right here on the homestead. I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. So until next time everybody, bye bye.